BC here with uh, MC Idea from Ideas or Idea and Abilities. And uh, you know, we're right here. They just finished up their sound check before they play here at Stubbs in Austin. Um, if you're unfamiliar with them, they're both skilled in their respective uh, fields. Idea for his freestyle and battling skills. <laughs> actually won the uh, Blaze Battle that was showed on HBO and DJ Abilities has won three DMC Regional Championship. <laughs> and has also served as Atmosphere's DJ on some tours. So, you know, thanks for sitting down with me and everything, man. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm thanks, really psyched about this show. We've been talking about it for months, so I'm I'm really excited. And, uh, yeah, so how are you enjoying the, the Texas heat so far? It's pretty <laughs> hot today. <you> yeah. <laughs> Not that bad, but, you know, we got to play outside today, so. Yeah, it, it uh, you know, I'm sure, actually, the inside stages around here would be even worse, so at least you have a little bit of ventilation. Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, appreciate the lack of rain we've had over the last few months, but, um, yeah, how's the weather up in Minnesota? You know, this year? I, you know, I haven't been there, we've been on the road for a while now, but, um, yeah. the winter was pretty tough this, this year, and then summer was really humid yeah. while I was there, and we were playing a lot of these festival shows, so it kind of went, for me, from freezing to death to being so hot that I was, like, <laughs> blacking out every time I played. Yeah. So, I hate to be a whiner, but... Just immune to the, uh... Yeah weather and everything now. It's, right. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a tough place as hard as weather, but yeah. I think that's kind of one of the reasons why there's so much art and so much creativity mm -hmm. that goes on there, you know. Cool. That's we'll a lot of time to sit and be really sad and self-loathing in the winter and then go <laughs> fucking crazy in the summer, you know. Yeah, it happens, you know. Um, yeah, so how's the tour with Atmosphere been going so far? It's been fun, man, you know. Yeah. We get to play, it's nice because uh, people that are uh, fans of the atmosphere music are pretty open-minded people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as openers this time, you know, we haven't made a record for like five or six years. Yeah. So not a lot of people know who we are anymore. And mm -hmm. So it's nice to have kind of some open-minded people check us out. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Any uh, crazy stories or anything like that on the road yet? Nah, or man, it's not really all that crazy. You know, haven't pretty, geared up for it yet. Yeah. <laughs> we're pretty just, you know, just like regular guys, back. you know. That's cool, yeah. No irate fans or anything. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't even know. Oh. <laughs> you just play and then talk to people and then go home. And that's sleep. all. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. I have to do it again. You know? Yeah. That's cool, man. Definitely. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah. That brings me to my question. It has been five years since you guys have recorded an album, and you know you both been working on separate projects and things like that. You had your alt rock band and everything that you're doing. Yeah. What made you guys decide to collaborate again and make this new album after so long? Well, you know, we've been good friends forever since we were kids. Yeah. And we just decided, you know, I'm not really sure. It's kind of like, it's hard to answer that question because it's kind of like the same question as, you know, how did you guys first become a group? Like, you yeah. don't really know. We just kind yeah. of like are so close and so involved in each other's lives. Yeah. That it just kind of happened. You just know? felt it was time or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Finally exactly. got a break to do it. Yeah, like, let's play again. Let's make a new record. You know? Yeah, definitely. And actually, uh, in this next week, you guys are going to be on a couple of the Rock the Bells. Yeah, 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 we've been doing that um, all summer on the mm -hmm. weekends, flying well, halfway across the country to play for 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Every weekend. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. That's cool. Well, for everyone that doesn't know, Rock the Bells showcases artists, I mean, just all sorts of hip-hop artists. Uh, Nas, KRS-One, Busta Rhymes, Damian Marley, the newly reformed House of Pain yeah. is going to be playing. Who are you guys really excited to play with? Uh, well, it's interesting because we play the paid due stage, which is kind of like the independent stage. Mm -hmm. And um, again, with the scheduling, it's like we kind of don't have a lot of time to watch bands yeah. or to do anything except for go and play and then get on a plane and come back. Oh, you know? uh, yeah. So I think if I was a bit younger and had a little more time, I might be a little more juiced. To yeah. check people out, but these days, you know, it's just like you, you kind of uh, focus in on your purpose and yeah, I got you play as hard as you can and then you try to sleep before you, you know, yeah. get into mania or something. Definitely. You know? <laughs> oh, that's cool, man. Definitely. Um, yeah, and uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about, you know, I just 
been kind of researching on your albums and stuff, and it never even crossed my mind, but I just realized that you guys, you know, uh, your se- was it your second album, ENA, was recorded, it was released on Rhyme Stairs and Epitaph Records. Yeah. How was that going with, you know, being on a label that most people would think of as a punk label, you know, founded by the guys from Bad Religion, and, yeah. you know, just how did that whole thing go? Well, at the yeah. time, I think um, our friend Andy over there was was really attempting to kind of uh, bridge, branch out a little mm-hmm. bit, you know, with that label, and he specifically, and I think a lot of people, um, just kind of saw the parallels between independent hip hop mm-hmm. and punk rock, you yeah, know, and kind of realized it's the same thing in a lot of ways, especially when it comes to like ethics. You know? Yeah, definitely. So it was really cool. Um, we were one of the first few that they did. Like, yeah, I noticed that. I mm-hmm. asked you guys, I saw they did, you know, the Danger Doom album mm-hmm. and uh, Bus Drivers on there yep. and stuff. But, I mean, it's been a while since they really recorded any right. new stuff. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, that's cool that at least they kind of branched out and you guys got to be a part of that. Yeah, and, yeah, no, it was, it was fun, you know. Definitely. Okay, and, um, yeah, I was, you know, one thing listening to y'all's music, what I really appreciate is how, you know, abilities kind of, you know, unlike a lot of the hip-hop groups that you hear now where the MC is kind of the focal point of it and everything else is kind of background music, but, you know, you guys have it to where abilities will be up there and he's scratching and doing his thing. And, you know, going crazy, even on the album, you know, not just live, you know. And, you know, how, how, what do you think about how the DJ is how he's viewed now versus how it used to be, you know, back when hip hop was first starting out, where the DJ was actually the main part and, you right. know, kind of outshined most of the MCs and stuff. Right. How do you really think about, you know, how the DJ is now, or kind of background stuff? You know, maybe not with you guys, but a lot of groups. Yeah, well, I think, you know, it, it's especially in hip hop, it's kind of such like a ego driven mm-hmm. kind of music, you know, yeah. it's all about like the front man you know, kind of talking about his thing or her thing or whatever. And we try to just make um, the turntables as important as, like, a lead guitar Mm -hmm. player, you know? So we try to, um, you know, write in solos um, and kind of just try to bridge the gap in that way, Mm -hmm. you know? Definitely. That's Mm -hmm. cool, yeah, because, you know, there are a lot of people that are producers and stuff, but they don't ever really get known, you know, until they become right. MC. Like, Kanye West is probably a perfect example of that, you know, he's producing Jay-Z albums before. Right. Well, and that's the that thing about stuff. production-based music, is it isn't really a perfect Yeah, that's thing, true. You know? Mm-hmm. So it's hard for a producer and a DJ in that way to actually get up in front of people and perform, mm-hmm. and that's half of, if not more than half of how you, um, especially if you're an independent act, how you kind of present yourself to the mm-hmm. world is from shows, you yeah. know, and um, so it's really difficult for somebody who spends time creating music, you know, kind of in the studio machines mm-hmm. um, and in computers and stuff like that to actually perform it, Yeah, you know, so I think that's kind of one of the things that separates the, uh, in hip-hop, the MC mm-hmm. you know, versus the producer, you know, Yeah, definitely. and I think if you can take some of the elements that are actual performance based mm-hmm. ideas, you know, especially with, like, idea and abilities, mm-hmm. uh, then it, it, it's the same thing live as it is on record, you know, it's the guitar solo, yeah. it just happens on the turntable, mm-hmm. you know. Cool. Okay, definitely. Um, well, I guess that's, you know, mm-hmm. all the questions I had, but, you know, I really appreciate you coming, hanging out, and talking with me and everything. I know it's really hot, and <laughs> yeah. it's a sound check, and you guys have got to go on, but, you know, I really appreciate it, and I'm sure everyone watching will really... Yeah, dig it. So, you know, good luck on your show. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Yeah, take it easy.